Well, good morning, everybody. I'm going to give it an opportunity for people to join. Welcome, welcome to anybody uh, joining in this morning. We're going to get started in just a moment. For those that are uh, joining in, I want to encourage you to hit that share button. We're going to get started in a couple minutes, um, but we want to get the word out to uh, people that are subscribed to our Facebook page and uh, let them know that we are online. So uh, if you can hear me, Give me a thumbs up if you can in the in the chat, just so that I know that you can hear me and that uh, you are uh, ready to tune in for this word that uh, I'm going to give this morning. I'm excited to bring the word. Again, we're going to get started in a couple minutes. Give people an opportunity to get online and to share uh, the live stream here. I hope everybody is having a wonderful, wonderful Sunday morning, staying warm. This is going to be a very uh, informal setting, very relaxed, casual. I have here uh, my cup of my cup of coffee here in the office, uh, and, but I also have my word. And uh, I'm excited to share a little word that uh, the Lord has given me. So for those that are uh, tuned in, um, do me a favor. We're going to get started in just a couple minutes. Uh, hit the uh, share button. Uh, share on your Facebook uh, with your Facebook friends, your family, uh, with others that are in the church, uh, part of the church, um, just to get them uh, tuned into this message on uh, on Facebook here. And uh, if you can, give me a, a couple uh, thumbs up or uh, heart emojis if you're ready to hear the word of God this morning. Um, I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to bring a little bit of a word today. I know that uh, we're not here in person um, and, uh, and everything, but uh, you know, God is still good. God is still sitting on the throne, and uh, he's in control. And I see some people in the chat. Miss Shirley, it is good to see you online. I'm just going to give a, a shout out to some of the people online here really quick. Again, this is real informal, casual. Hopefully you guys have your Bible, have a cup of coffee, maybe have a notepad uh, for anybody who wants to take some notes. I see uh, Miss Gail, it's good to see you uh, online tuned in uh, this morning. Um, go ahead and if you can hit that share button. We want to get the word out to folks about the live stream. I see more viewers jumping on. Praise God for that. We'll get started in about one or two minutes. And for those that are joining in, uh, feel free to share this uh, live stream. Share it on your Facebook. If you can, hit that share button. Um, give some reactions, some heart emojis. Uh, I want this to be very interactive. Um, just like I tell those that are here regularly on Sunday morning, um, you know, I, I like response. I like uh, people to just uh, give affirmation back to me when I'm preaching. So even though we're uh, in a different setting uh, this morning, um, I, I still want to see that, you know, share your heart uh, emojis, share your uh, your thumbs up during the live stream and share your comments. Uh, you know, people are going to see uh, throughout the day as this gets shared, they're going to see the responses of people. And uh, so it's important. Let's stay very interactive in this. And uh, and it's I'm seeing more people joining and jumping on for those. Welcome. If you can, let me know, uh, you know, sh share a comment, you know, just saying hi in the in the comments, just so I can say hi back to you. 
Um, you know, thanks for tuning in. I'm going to give it about one more minute and then we're going to get started. And um, we're also going to be sharing this on uh, YouTube uh, a little later on. This It'll be the recording of this live stream that's going on on Facebook right now. Um, we'll share it for our YouTube viewers. There's many people in the church that are not in uh, social media. That's okay. We want to share the word with them. I see Jordan Lamb on there. What's up? It's good to see you online here, buddy. Praise God. Uh, and uh, so we're going to share the word with our YouTube uh, family as well in just a short while. And um, and we're just going to you know share the, the, the love of Christ uh, wherever we can. Thank God for these platforms. You know, somebody give me an amen if you appreciate social media. I know social media, YouTube, um, a lot of drama in these realms these days. Uh, and uh, But at the end of the day, thank God for technology. We have the capability, um, even during uh, winter weather or unexpected events that can happen, that we have this capability. It is a blessing. You know, um, God will take anything and he will use it for his glory. And uh, and we thank God for for social media and everything. And I do want to say this, um, you know, I know that um, I know I know people might be, uh, you know, sad. We're not here in person. Let me tell you what, there's nobody that is more sad about not being here in person than your pastor. I absolutely love Sunday mornings. I look forward to Sunday mornings on a weekly basis to come together, uh, to worship together. Um, it's an honor of mine to every week bring the word of God. And how many of you just by sh sh hitting some hearts and hitting some thumbs up in the live stream could say that you have just been touched and blessed by what God has been doing here at Life Source Perry Hall, the power of God has been uh, moving and flowing through this uh, this church, and uh, and you know I, I was ready to bring a word this morning to continue my message series about the remnant. Um, I'm going to save that message for uh, next week. I'm excited to bring it, um, and uh, but you know uh, I'm disappointed that we couldn't be here in person. These are tough calls to make. Um, I know that, uh, you know, uh, it, they're, they're very, very tough calls for any pastor, or any leadership in the church to, to, to make. Um, at the end of the day, um, you know, I hope people understand that it's not an easy decision to make. We care about people. We love about we love people. We uh, care about the safety. Um, we could go down the line and so many factors play into these decisions. Some factors that people don't think about. Um, they're never easy decisions to make. Um, but at the end of the day, God is sitting on the throne and we're here to read the word, study the word, and to preach the word of God this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. If you can go ahead and join me uh, in agreement for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Lord, I thank you that even in the midst of winter weather, Lord God, I thank you that you are still in control. I thank you that you sit upon the throne. There's nothing that catches you off guard. There's nothing that takes you by surprise, Lord God. And Lord, even though we're not here in person, we're we're here online today on Facebook and later on on YouTube. God, I pray that your word would go forth. I pray that your word would pierce our hearts, Lord, that you would show us something in your word today that you want us to learn and even uh, put, put, uh, put into action in our daily lives, Lord God. God, we give you the glory and the praise and all things and all the people of God said, amen and amen. And today I want to give... I don't know how long this word will be, but for those that have joined online really quick, because like I said, this is going to be very informal. Hopefully everybody's got a cup of coffee. If you're not a coffee drinker like me, hopefully you got like a cup of tea, hot chocolate, whatever uh, rocks your boat uh, while you're sitting at home uh, on any morning. Uh, get your cup, but also get your Bible, get a notepad, get a pen. Uh, get some notes ready. Maybe you have a phone. Maybe you want to go ahead and take some notes on your phone. Feel free to do that because we're going to get into the word. And uh, this morning, I had to kind of put a quick word together, uh, something that, uh, you know, just thinking that today is, uh, what, February 13th. If you know that tomorrow is February 14th and it is Valentine's Day. 
How many would say, I have a Valentine, I got a husband, I got a wife, I got a boyfriend, I got a girlfriend. Hopefully, husbands, you're taking your wives out to a nice uh, a nice dinner or doing a nice gesture at home for your uh, your spouse and uh, and those type of things. And, um, you know, tomorrow will be a busy day, I'm sure, at restaurants and things. But, you know, I started to think about tomorrow being Valentine's Day. And, um, you know, it's the day where we kind of get mushy and all about love and showing love and adoration towards, you know, our significant other. But how many of you know who our first love is? Our first love, give me an amen in the chat. Give me some emojis. Our first love in this world is Jesus Christ. Well, I, we, uh, For me, I love the Lord. I love Jesus with all my heart. And I love him above all other. I love him above all else. And that's what he wants of each and every one of us is to love him above all else. You know, the Bible says, you know, that talking about a church that has left its first love, a people that have left its first love. And his, our first love in this world should be Jesus Christ. He's the lover of our soul. Somebody say amen. And uh, I love him above my spouse, my children, above my friends, you know, and that's that's a big statement because I, lo I love my spouse. I love my wife wholeheartedly. I love my children. But at the end of the day, he is the lover of my soul. And so I wanted to just share a word about the language of love. So if you've got your Bible, I want you to open it up to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 this morning. And while you're opening it up, hit the share button. I'm just doing some housekeeping stuff because uh, we want to get people viewed, in, viewed and tuned in this morning from home on this word. But open up your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We know this chapter throughout the, the Bible as the love chapter. And I wanted to go ahead and uh, take an opportunity to read it this morning. And it says this, if you're reading with me uh, from home, it says, if I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains, but didn't love others, I would be nothing. That's that's a powerful statement. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. I don't know if I'm going to keep reading on in that chapter in just a moment. And I don't know if anybody has ever heard of a book that is out there called The Five Love Languages. And uh, it was a book that I had read many years ago. If you have read that, you know, you can just give a thumbs up if you've heard if you've read that book or have heard of that book. And within that book, there the author writes out five love languages for spouses to display uh, one, one to another and also for a spouse that their spa our spouse uh, has certain love languages that we learn to speak. Those five love languages, I wrote them down today, were first, words of affirmation. The second one, quality time. The third thing, giving gifts. And the fourth thing, acts of service. And the fifth thing, physical touch. And I began to think about that when I woke up this morning and had to adjust things for this morning. And I started to wonder, do you think that Jesus had a love language. Do you think that he spoke these love languages? And I began to think about that and dwell on that and ponder on that this morning. And the more I thought about it, uh, looking at those things, word of affirmation, quality time, giving gifts, acts of service, physical touch, those are all things that Jesus operated in and spoke on a, on a regular basis. Somebody say amen. And you know, how many of you know we are to be in the image of Christ? I want to be like Christ. And so I wanted to kind of dive into, you know, some of these love languages, what they mean for us. Because when we read that book, The Five Love Languages, we can take those things and we can apply it 
towards, uh, you know, our relationship with a spouse. Um, but I believe that there's elements of truth from these love languages that we can apply as believers every single day. Um, how many of you know that uh, we are to be uh, folks that are operating in acts of service? Jesus said this in, in Matthew chapter 20. He said, whoever desires to become greatest among you, let him be what? Your servant. He says to be your servant. And Jesus even says, he says, I didn't come to, I came not to be served, but to serve and give my life a ransom for many. Jesus is the ultimate example of what it means to be a servant on this earth. He is the prime example of what it means to operate in acts of service. Here he is the son of God. He is the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. He And, uh, and he's going to be worshipped now and forevermore. Somebody say amen. But he set the ultimate example to say, although I am the king of kings, I am the Lord of lords i'm gonna show you what it means to serve i'm gonna show you what it means to walk in acts of service and he came not to be served but to serve and he give his life a ransom for many how many of you are thankful just by showing through your response on social media right now that you are thankful for jesus that he is the one that gave his life for you and me and for all of us on this earth even for those that have rejected rejected him in this hour even those that maybe have turned away from him he has still died and paid, given his life as a ransom for every single one of us on this earth and you know that we ought to be uh just like christ and serving uh and and i and 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 i can say even for me my my uh every day i want to be somebody who wants to serve uh I, there's just because i'm a pastor doesn't mean that i that i'm puffed up i don't have a big head but you know i i want to be christ-like he is my example he is my image and i want to serve others somebody say amen the next thing that i wanted to share was the words of affirmation if you look up the word affirmation the word affirmation means something declared to be true now today we live in a day and age where truth is hated how many of you know that that is true that truth is hated in this hour truth is actually let's just tell the truth and shame the devil about it truth has actually been uh labeled as hate speech in this hour if you tell the truth about what the bible says that people will say oh you're being hateful oh you're being mean oh you're being nasty but i'm here to reaffirm and i have to declare a truth and i feel the presence of god in what i'm about to say that for those people in the body of christ that have refused to back down and are out to declare the truth of the word of God in this hour that they are that they are doing it out of 100% love because the bible says this and i want to say this from the book of ephesians chapter 4 verses 14 and 15 it says this then we will no longer be immature like children we won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching we will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth and this is what paul writes in verse 15 he says instead we will speak the truth in what in love growing in every way more and more like christ who is the head of his body the church somebody should give some hearts and some thumbs up in the chat right now and say amen to that for those of us that are out there in this hour that are declaring this word for what it says we do not do it because we hate anybody 
We do it because we love people and we love people enough to where we do not want to see anybody separate from the presence of God for eternity. Let me tell you something for those that are tuned in today. And, and if you're on the live stream, hit the share button because somebody needs to hear this word today is, and this is a reality. There is a heaven and there is a hell. I know that there is maybe some people that are out there that are questioning whether that there is a hell, but I'm here to tell you there is a heaven and there is a hell. And every one of us have a choice to make as to where we are going to, what where our destination is going to be headed. We have a choice to choose heaven or choose hell. You have, a, if you have breath in your lungs, you're on this live stream right now, tuned into this, uh, to this broadcast. You have a choice right now while you are alive on this earth to choose to surrender, to give your life to Jesus Christ, to, to have him become the Lord of your, of your heart and, and of your life. And I'm here to tell tell you that there is, regardless of what any preacher would say, there is a heaven and there is a hell. I know I've, I've actually heard some pastors and preachers say that they don't, they question whether hell exists. And my response to that is if hell exists, if hell does not exist, sorry, if hell does not exist, then what's the point of us having church? What's the point of us getting together if everybody is going to heaven in the first place? If everybody is on their way to heaven and there is no hell, then what are we doing this for? We're all just wasting our time. We could stay home Sunday morning and have pancakes every Sunday morning and drink coffee every Sunday morning. But I'm here to tell you, and give me some likes in the chat right now, because I feel the Holy Ghost in this statement, that there is a heaven and there is a hell. And we love people. Let me tell you, we love you enough to tell you the truth of what the gospel of Jesus Christ says. There is sin on this earth. We are born into the curse of sin in, the, in this world. And I'm here to tell you the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Somebody say amen. And so I'm here to tell you the truth is a hard thing at times to hear and people reject the truth in this day and hour but we speak the truth because we have a genuine love for you and we have a genuine love enough to tell you the truth because we do not want to see you slip into an eternity an eternal separation from god almighty himself and that actually leads me into some another one of the other gifts i just mentioned the scripture about the way Ages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's Romans 6.23, and that lines up with one of the other love languages in, in that book, the uh, giving gifts. Let me tell you, my wife, God bless her, she is, uh, this falls into her. As a, as a matter of fact, every Christmas that comes around, you shall buy a gift. And she gets so uh, angry at me at times because she'll buy a gift and she's so eager to see my response or uh, the, the kid's response to a gift that she buys them. And so she, uh, she gets these gifts and all of a sudden she's like itching. It's December 2nd. She's like, can I give you the present now? Can I give you the present now? Can I give you the present now? And I'm like, and I was pushed back. I'm like, no, you're going to have to wait till December 25th. Anybody know what I'm talking about there? And, um, and so, you know, she is, this is her love language. She is all about giving gifts to people. And how many of you know that our God is a giver? Somebody say amen. And you are never more like God when you are in the, in the, act of giving. I even mentioned this as, you know, one of the things that uh, Jesus spoke in the book of Matthew, I believe in, in chapter six, when he said, when you give, when you pray, when you fast, if you were here in January for our fasting study, you heard me talk about that. And, um, and I, you know, I'm just here to tell you that when we give, we are more like Christ 
every single day. And that's a love language. How many of you can say that I'm a giver and not just of your finances, but we've even been collecting things for the homeless shelter recently. And many of you have donated out of kindness and affection and care for, for those that have nothing or in need of things. And so, um, you know, when we give, we are nothing, we are so much like Christ when we are in the business of giving. One of the other things that is a love language, quality time. How many of you know it's important that you make quality time for those that you love, your husband, your wife? You've got to sometimes put the busyness, put the laundry aside, put the cleaning aside, and you have to make an opportunity to have that quality time with your loved one. You know, I don't know any marriages that are going on right now, any relationships right now where that work out very well when you don't give quality time to your love, your loved ones. It is so important. And that translates into our walk with God. That translates into every day. Ask, I want you to honestly search yourself out right now. And I want you to genuinely ask yourself this. Do you give quality time to Jesus Christ every day? When you wake up in the morning, do you think about his word? Do you think about praying? Do you think about seeking his face? Is he the first thought on your mind. Let me tell you, um, I, it was, we, we get so distracted with the cares of this world. We get so distracted with the pleasures of this world. But how many of you know that God wants us to make quality time for him on the daily? Somebody say amen to that. He wants you, while tuned in on this live stream right now, to be in the business of committing quality time to him every single day just like husbands as you would make quality time to sit down with your wife maybe you're sitting down at the end of a night and you're just snuggled up on the couch and just or you're sitting at the table and you're just asking how was your day that's the type of relation how many of you know give me an amen right now because this is for real that's the kind of quality time that god is looking for us to give him on a regular basis he wants us to have quality time in his word but let me even take it a step further to challenge some people here it is not just about the quality time that he wants you to have with him on the daily but he also also wants us to have quality time together as a corporate body of worshipers worshiping the Lord together. This is why the Bible says that we should remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. I know that in 2022, that's a tight word. That's tight, but it is right to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. It is, let me, I can't stress enough how important it is that when the doors of the church are open, when we don't have weather events that kind of play into whether we open the doors or not, but when these church doors are open, that moms, dads, husbands, wives, grandma, grandpa, that you would get to the house of God. Like Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And it is so important. How many of you remember there used to be a day that when when Sunday came, you would go to the house of God. You weren't going to, you weren't working your job on the regular. You were, weren't staying home for the live stream. And God bless the ability that we can be uh, live online on a week to week basis. But there, there was something special about coming to the house of God. And let me tell you what, I think that we need to get back to that. If somebody say, amen, we need to get back this is a word that actually the uh, the Lord gave me just this week. We need to get back to the primitive. You know what the primitive means? It means getting back to the foundation. It means getting back to the very beginning, getting back 
to the house of God, when the house, when the doors are open, that we are here in the house of the Lord together, worshiping the Lord together, seeking his face together, just like those that were waiting in the upper room, were in together in one mind and one accord. Let me just say, I can't stress it enough, the importance of us being together. Let's not forsake the assembling together, but let's not also prioritize other things in this world, our careers, our finances our jobs, even the the leisure of things that we are doing uh, activity-wise with our children and forsake coming to the house of God. How many of you can testify that it one of the most the most important thing outside of your own personal studies throughout the week, being in your word and being in the prayer closet is making it a priority for you and your family to be in the house of God every single Sunday. Somebody say amen to that it, it it is the most important thing to me because let me tell you what in all the in all the years with my children i have never had my children question to me say do i have to go to church dad do i have to go to church in all the years and you know why i've said that because in the very beginning in the foundation of my family hallelujah somebody knows where i'm going with this that in the very foundation of my family i made the decision to say as for me and my household we are going to serve the lord we will go to church we will be together with the believers i'm not going to forsake the assembly together, but I want to be in the house of God when the house of God is open. Somebody say amen to that. And uh, the the last thing I want to get into is physical touch. And I believe what I just said kind of plays into this. You know, when we think of the love language of physical touch, we think, I think we automatically think, uh, we think about we think about sex. We think about, um, you know, intimacy. We, th- hey, maybe even uh, a husband or wife. You think about, hey, I want a good massage, honey. Can you massage my back? I know we have somebody in our church that told me that, you know, they have uh, some back problems and they just love it when their when their wife gives them a, a back rub and everything. And I can say, amen to that uh, as well. And, but you know, the physical touch is not just about those things, but it is about, let me tell you, there's something special when we come together, congregating together. Do you know that there's something special about when I have the ability to lay my hand on the shoulder of a brother or sister in Christ and to pray for them and, you know, and to just uh, and put myself out there for my brother or sister in Christ. There's something special when we come together how many of you just have ever, let me ask this again, we're being really informal here. I got, let me actually, I'm going to take a drink of my coffee if that's okay. Just to say this, let me ask this question. Have you ever gotten a hug to the point where you got such an embrace from a brother or sister in Christ that it just opened you up? It released the ch- any chains, heaviness. Somebody give me an amen if you've experienced that. They, we, look, we're, we're all human beings. We carry burdens. And, and sometimes the hardest thing that we have the ability to do is taking the burdens that we're carrying and casting those burdens onto Jesus. We know that we should, but how many of you know that can be a struggle at times because we're just human beings. It's in our nature to worry. It's in our nature to be concerned. And we carry a heaviness at times. But how many of you have ever been hugged by a brother or sister in Christ? And as you're hugged and as you're embraced, that all of a sudden you just feel a release that happens. And how many of you can genuinely say that you've even felt healing that begins to happen when you have just been embraced by that brother, by that sister in Christ? Let me tell you what, that's why it is so important to just be to get to come together to meet in homes to have you know bible studies and small groups together to have that physical touch you know jesus said this in john chapter 15 verse 13 he said greater love has no one in this than to lay his life down 
for one uh, one another somebody say amen to lay your life down for one another and so you know uh it is it, it, i know when we get that embrace when we get that hand on the shoulder or we have somebody that joins us locks hands with us uh together when we're here together in in sunday morning service or at home there's breakthrough that happens for people you know you don't even have to get into just praying a prayer just a, an embrace can bring so much release to people and i think i've experienced that at times and that heaviness just leaves in the name of jesus and i wanted to continue on really quick to read this uh read this chapter again you know because you know all these things that we just mentioned you know when it comes to speaking in tongues let me say this this chapter can be a hard thing for pentecostals to hear at times that if we can speak in tongues but we don't have love that we're nothing more than a clanging symbol now if i went out into the sanctuary right now and jordan has been tuned in on this live stream and i go out there and grab his symbol right now and bring it to my office and hold it right here and i just sit here and i just beat this for the entire for an hour let's just say Tell me, you would be annoyed by that. You probably would jump off the live stream if I did that. That's what God says when we are operating in the gifts of the spirit, when we're speaking, when we're worried about speaking in tongues, but we don't have love. When we have the gift of prophecy, he says that if I, if you oper, if you have words of wisdom, words of knowledge, if you have faith, if you were the most generous person in, in your giving and loving the poor and you were laying your life down for 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 even the lowliest of the low but if you don't have love you have nothing and you have gained nothing let me tell you everything and sometimes i feel like that maybe we we can easily forget this elementary principle everything that we do points back to love it is reaffirmed by love and it is reaffirmed by our love for christ and our love for others somebody say amen i want to go to verse four and actually i feel like this is very very applicable for for today love is patient and kind love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude that's a word right there. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. This is what the New Living Translation says. It is not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but it rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance we're talking about everything here somebody say amen give me some likes and on the live stream if you can Ev everything that we do everything that we put our hands to every gift of the spirit that we operate in and move in it is all motivated it should all be motivated 100 percent by love to the point where uh, chat verse 13 says this three things will last forever faith hope and love and the greatest of these is love and i love what even chapter 14 verse 1 says and sometimes we forget about this but verse 1 in chapter 14 says let love be your highest goal i don't know about you i want to love others actually i'll tell you the truth about something that the lord gave me to uh, for 2022 and it is a purpose of mine this year and i feel like it should be a purpose for all of us i want to be in 2022 a friend to sinners you know i shared with some of our leadership just in the last day or two just in chatting casually you know when it comes to reaching others i don't want to fish in other churches ponds somebody somebody shout at me right now i do not want to fish in other churches ponds i want us to go find our own pond and i want us to go reach the lost i don't want to reach other churchgoers from other churches if 
uh, people from other churches come to this church. Well, bless God for that. We will have you. We will love you. We want you to be a part. But in the end of the day, I want to see newcomers that come into the kingdom of God first and foremost above all that would second of all be a part of our local church here at Life Source Perry Hall. And I want to fish in our own pond and, and just love on the lost in 2022. I I need to be a friend of sinners. We all need to be a friend of sinners. Now, what does that mean? That doesn't mean compromise. That doesn't mean getting off of your biblical principles. That means that you are getting out of your bubble, that you're getting out of your Christian comfort zone, and you're going to go find yourself some people that need to hear the good news that you once heard, that somebody gave to you through love for you. We need to take that kind of love and put it into action and share the good news of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen to the lost, and, and I'm believing for 2022 to be a supernatural harvest year, but it's going to start on the foundation of love, loving one another and loving our neighbors as ourselves. I, there was a brother in our church that just said just recently, what would happen if we took an opportunity this year to just reach one, reach one person, ask yourself, when's the last time any of us have reached somebody for the gospel of Jesus Christ? Just one, one for the kingdom of God. That's the kind of love we, we need that kind of love to love the Lord God with all of our heart, all of our soul and all of our mind and all our strength and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Somebody say amen to that. And I want to we're going to close up in just a moment, but I want you to stay with me. Hit the share button. Share with this word with somebody on social media right now. Uh, but I want to share this word with uh, with uh, you online today. Sometimes I feel like that we think that Christianity, maybe people think that Christianity, I shouldn't say we, but people think Christianity is about following rules. Let me say this. It's contrary from the truth. It's about love and it's about relationship relationship with an almighty god because the bible says this in the book of john chapter 14 verse 15 it says jesus said these words and he said if you love me you will obey my commandments how many of you maybe have you know tried to you at one point in your walk with god you try to look at the word and you try to say, oh, man, this is this this word is really hard to live by. It's really hard to stick to. Let me tell you what, in my own personal walk with God, I can tell you and I can testify that when I first and foremost love Jesus with all of my heart, I find that it, I just naturally obey the word of God. I don't have to be caught up in, oh man, I, I, I tripped up and fell today. Oh, I tripped up and sinned today. Oh, I, I, these, these commandments are really hard to follow. Somebody testify, you know, that you agree with me on this, but when you come to a place where he is the lover of your soul, he is your first love in all this world, you find yourself automatically fulfilling the commandments of God in your life. Isn't that so good? Somebody say, amen. I, I, I know that when I, the more I love on the, on him, the more I just begin to fulfill the things in the word, the, be, uh, the more I begin to walk in his word on a regular basis. I don't have to be caught up in, le in legalism. I don't have to be caught up in rule following because it is all about having Having a love relationship with Almighty God. This entire word is all about covenant, all about a marriage. This, you know, what the to sum up the gospel the, in this way, this word is a marriage covenant between God and his people. Amen. And so when I, I know that as the more I love him, 
the more I'm just going to fulfill the, the word in my life. And I don't have to be caught up in the do's or don'ts. All I've got to do is just love on him. And the more I love on him, the more I want to live by this word, the more I want to obey his word, because he is my first love in this world. Somebody say amen and amen. Well, I want to go ahead and just close out this broadcast in a in a word of prayer. I, I want to just say, I, I hope it encourages you to increase your love for Jesus Christ, to increase your love for others. As we go into Valentine's Day tomorrow, and it's going to be a day all about love. I even feel like it, I'm praying that love would come back into marriages in the name of Jesus. I'm praying that love would come back in in the in families between a mom and their children, between a, a, a father and their children. Some I'm prophesying to somebody here right now. I'm speaking this into existence that you know the Bible says this that love covers a multitude. Hallelujah of sins. Love covers a multitude. It covers all sins. It, it beyond what you can see, well, beyond what you can comprehend. Love covers a multitude of sin. I'm excited just saying that scripture. Somebody say amen. We have to be all about loving God and loving others and letting that love carry into our families, into our households, into our marriages. And I'm praying, oh Lord, that love. Love would win in households again. That love would win in relationships again, in marriages, but and and uh, parental and child relationships again in the name of Jesus. But most of all, Lord, may you be our first love. May we never forsake our first love. God, I want to just say, forgive me. I humble myself when I have loved things of this world above you. Somebody agree with me. I need some ag agreement in the chat right now. Forgive me when I have loved other things of this world above you. Forgive me when I have placed the love for people above you. But Lord, I want to love you above all things. And as I love you above all things, I know that everything else will come into order and I will love my wife more. I will love my children more. I will love others more. I will love my neighbors more because I love you first and foremost above all things. And Lord, I just Pray that over every person. Tune in on Facebook right now and we'll, who will be tuned in on YouTube later. And may love win in this hour. And Lord, I just thank you for your word today. And Lord, we just thank you for this time in your word. And we give you the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, I say with everybody else in agreement, amen and amen and amen. God bless you all. I appreciate every one of you that has tuned in to this message. I, you know, again, uh, you know, I, I, I myself was disappointed we couldn't be here in the house of God together, but I feel like we had church right here on this live stream with this word today. And I just want to pray blessings upon every one of you throughout this week. I want to encourage you because I've seen just by looking at the chat, I see some people that I haven't seen uh here in person in a long time hey let me tell you what i am looking forward to having you back to the house of god if you're tuned in you haven't been here at life source Perry hall in a long time i want to encourage you and invite you to come out next sunday morning uh, we've been preaching on god raising up a remnant we're going to continue to preach that word next week. And I am believing for the Holy Ghost to move in our service next week because he said we're two, three, two or three are gathered in my name that I'm there in the midst of them. And so we're going to trust God. We are going to believe that God is going to do exceedingly and abundantly that we, above all that we could ask according to the power that is in each and every one of us. Somebody say amen. And we're going to trust that God is going to move in this place next Sunday. Share this live stream all over your Facebook today. And God bless you all. Have a wonderful day and may the Lord be with you.